Okay, lovely. So yeah, welcome to our webinar today um, on the theme of using digital tools to teach anatomy and physiology. We are delighted you could join us. Um, so I'm sure probably by this point, um, many of you will be working from home and will have been using Zoom for many meetings and webinars, but just to be clear, in case anyone's new to it, um, you should be able to hear and see um, myself, uh, my colleagues, uh, David and Sam, and also our panel. Um, we won't be able to see the participants because this is a broadcast webinar, um, but you will be able to interact with our panel, um, either by using the Q&A box to pop some questions in there, or by using the chat box if there are general comments that you would like to make throughout the webinar. Um, if you do have anything open on your computer that uses a lot of connectivity, you might want to just close that down just for the duration of the event, just to get the best experience. Um, so the agenda for today, it's a very short agenda, but I just wanted to make sure everyone was clear as to what was happening. Um, so first of all, we're going to have some introductions from our speakers, just so you know who your experts are. Um, and we're going to then be having a discussion um, on the themes around teaching anatomy and physiology and how our speakers have found um, some digital tools that have helped make that job easier uh, and improve the results they're getting. Um, that discussion is going to be chaired by my colleague, uh, David, who I'm sure will also introduce himself shortly. Um, and then at the end, we're hoping to leave some time for some questions. Uh, so if you uh, think of things you'd like to ask as we're going through the discussion, please do pop those in the Q&A box and we will get to those for the latter kind of 20 minutes or so of the session today. Now, I'm wondering if I might go to our speakers in turn and just ask them to briefly introduce themselves rather than me uh, attempting it and possibly uh, fumbling the information. Um, Sabrina, could I possibly invite you to go first, please? Are you there, Sabrina? Are you on mute, potentially? Yes. Of course, a beginner's okay. mistake. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. <laughs> As I didn't use Zoom before. <laughs> so my name is Sabrina Tosi. I've been a lecturer at uh, Brunel University London since 2005. And I've been teaching uh, anatomy and physiology uh, for all these years. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm very familiar with the digital learning tool uh, Connect from McGraw Hill, um, as uh, um, I've been using it now for about six years uh, to teach um, anatomy and physiology to biomedical sciences student, students uh, in the first year. Um, I think I will have a lot of opportunities later on to talk about my experience. Wonderful. Thank you, Sabrina. Marie, would you like to introduce yourself briefly? Yeah. Hi, my name is Marie Maskell. I am from Ireland. Uh, I was the anatomy lead for anatomy education in the School of Nursing, Midwifery and Health Systems in University College Dublin in Ireland. Um, I taught anatomy and physiology for 16 years in University College Dublin, and we implemented McGraw-Hill uh, Learning te Technology in 2019, a year before the pandemic. So uh, it was it was it was good that we had that support uh, function for the online environment. Uh, I recently moved into a new position, a senior instructional designer at uh, CUA Alliance, which is a new technological university in the northwest of Ireland. So that's my background. Wonderful, thank you, um, Joan. Would you like to go next, please? Yes, uh, thank you very much, David and Bryony, for inviting me uh, to this panelist talk. Um, I'm Dr. Joan Liu, and I'm a senior lecturer in the School of Life Sciences in the University of Westminster. So I lead a very large module of about 400 student plus uh, first year undergrad in um, studying Bachelor of um, Biomedical Science. And the module I lead is called Functional Anatomy. So we um, basically teach the students anatomy. And what we've been using McGraw Hill for the last three years, and, and the students' feedback have been very good. So I'm looking forward to uh, provide some more information about the McGraw Hill tools to you during the session. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so very much. I'm not sure if Ashley has actually joined us yet. Um, so obviously she can't introduce herself, hopefully she will um, join us shortly, um, but without further ado I will hand you over to my colleague David. Um, I also wanted just to mention that my colleague Sam who um, commissions titles on our nursing list is going to be keeping an eye on the chat box for us, so they'll be popping questions in there and uh, commenting on anything that you pop in there. Let me just stop sharing my screen. Okay, and over to you David for the important bit. 
Thanks very much, Barney. Um, good morning or good afternoon, uh, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, my name is David. David Selby. I work for McGraw Hill. Um, I worked for McGraw Hill for six years. I'm a regional sales manager based in West London, and I actually have the house to myself today. Normally, I have cats kind of coming. I've had a child crawling over me. So. All is peaceful in the world. Sun has been shining, unlike um, Northwest um, Ireland, I'm afraid, Marie. Um, great, thank you for joining. Um, we're going to sort of run through some questions. We're about to 20 minutes of questions, which well, well, maybe 40 minutes. It doesn't seem enough, but um, we'll, we'll try our best to cover as much as we can from, from the panelists that are here. Um, and I think sort of kick off really is the first first question. I know I've worked a little bit with Sabrina and, and Joan, Marie, um, hello, first of all, we've met. I know you work with Gary, but I think it's thinking about what what made that step um, to using digital in the first place. And if I could start with with Sabrina, um, and I was involved a little bit in that come six years ago. Um, you know, from using a probably sort of a, a text based teaching style, what made you take that leap into using sort of digital resources? I, I was already familiar with the um, with the textbook because I was already adopting it for teaching uh, to my my class and for a couple of years. And then when I received a visit from David, uh, I think it was the first week of your uh, of your uh, appointment with Macro Hill. And uh, he came to my office to present this digital learning tool, and I was uh, just fascinated. Um, I was familiar with the animations and with, with the instructor resources, so I was already using those for my teaching. But um, what I really liked of the tool um, were um, the fact that um, I could monitor student engagement and uh, I could set assignments and uh, I could guide more closely uh, my students' uh, learning. Um, what I also liked a lot was the um, um, Cadaver dissecting tool um, that now, I mean, within the past six years has evolved. Um, and that in general, actually, the whole tool has evolved to adapt more and more to the needs of the instructors and the students. So what I like is that it's, a, um, it's always improving. Uh, without um, becoming, um, you know, it's, it's still user friendly and it's quite, um, uh, you know, uh, effective because uh, not everybody from the academic um, cohort is really keen in uh, engaging with the, with the digital tools. And I see with uh, a lot of my colleagues who are not really familiar, they, they're, they're a bit um, skeptical, you know, they prefer to use the conventional um, uh, kind of lectures and, uh, um, and assignment styles, but, uh, um, you know, it's nothing to be afraid of. And I'm trying to convince my colleagues that actually the benefits are um, uh, much more than the hassle that potentially you could um, um, incur. I don't know if I answered this question, David, uh, or... You, you did indeed. Um, and I'm going to head over to, to Marie, because I know your story less so. So it'd be fascinating to hear, you know, why you made that decision to move to Corsola. Um, yeah, I suppose our decision to implement McGraw-Hill Learning Technology is was based on what was best for our students, because um, we know from a lot of the research that nursing and midwifery students find bioscience is quite difficult, particularly in the first year of the program. So we needed to find a, a tool that would kind of scaffold uh, the learning for students and for them to take control of their own learning and to have a personalized learning environment. So um, our biggest motivation were our students, um, the need to have tools outside of the typical didactic lecture to support their own learning. So uh, that was our reason. We have, we also had a large class. We have over 300 students in the first year nursing midwifery programs in University College Dublin. So um, to meet the needs of every student, we needed to have a technology tool that would support and adapt to their learning as they progressed through the entire stage one of their, of their program. So that was our, our need as well. We also, you know, have had experience with other technology tools. We 
-hmm. we have moved from other really common publishers um, and we moved from a really big publisher to McGraw Hill because there was GDPR concerns and that they were holding the student data outside of Europe. That was a big concern for us. So we needed to, to move and McGraw Hill fit the bill there in that they were holding the, the GDPR student data within Europe, uh, which was really important for us. And that was another major reason why we decided to, to move to McGraw Hill. But students were our number one focus, and uh, they they do they do uh, like the like the tool. That's great, thank you, Maria. And I think the the GDPR privacy issues, which have come up in many different universities, and and I know that came up last year at Sabrina uh, with Sabrina at um, Brunel as well. Um, and over to over to Joan at Westminster. Yes. Um, so. Uh... A few years back, when we start Functional Anatomy, it was quite a new module, and the student doesn't have a core textbook to follow upon. So we always advise, you know, readings from this textbook and another reading from this textbook who specialise in another topic. So it was really quite difficult uh, for the students to follow all of these textbooks. So we found that um, the textbook that we're using now from McGill Hill really fit the bill, um, cover basically all, all the topics that we want to introduce and also have very good images of um, histology as well, which we teach part of functional anatomy. So the images and that's in the text, McGill Hill textbooks are very good and it's um, friendly, user friendly as well for the students. So they like it really well. Um, I remember being invited to an introductory meeting at McGaw Hill headquarters in Houston, and I remember um, Sabrina actually presenting at that, at that, and it was fascinating to know that um, actually McGaw Hill uh, is not just a publisher of textbook, but they have so many other functions that's linked to it. So the smart book allowing students to actually um, get those textbook online so they don't actually have to purchase the textbook. That's really important because some of our students um, may not actually buy the textbooks themselves. So having this online course uh, textbook associated um, with other McGill Hill tools like an anatomy and physiology review, which um, Sabrina has said is the dissection tools. It's very important for anatomy. Um, we also got the lab smart, which are used in other modules, uh, critical skills for biomedical scientists as well. So that those are all, all fantastic. Um, but what we really want is actually a resource to encourage students to do pre-reading before coming into the lectures and actually setting reading assignments with a little points towards their summative assessment, towards their summative grade. That really encourages students to actually read, pre, do pre-reading and also post-reading as well, because they can also access those assignment again um, after they have completed the first time and got the marks, but they can actually revisit those things again. Um, so that, that's really important for the students. And um, just with the reading assignments, it's not just about reading as well. So that's passive, but it's actually active uh, actually doing the MCQ questions, which the student um, really found really um, engaging and also important. And that really helped with their learning as well. Um, and obviously um, some of these MCQ questions um, that's associated with certain concepts are repeated again in different versions. So the student can actually think about that question or that concept in different ways. And that's really helpful to the student's learning. Yeah, so there's many wonderful aspects to um, why we kind of leaped into um, McGaw, you know, with getting McGill Hill Smart Book um, and basically the whole platform in our module. Um, and our students really enjoy uh, the online resource, um, the freedom to explore online themselves as well, um, supported with the lecture notes and tutorial notes. Um, and I think it's very important for, um, especially last year during the COVID when the student actually can't come in. So having the, this additional support there for the student um, is very critical. That's it from me, David. That's, that's great, Joan. Um, and yes, I do remember that presentation very well. And it was lovely being able to have those presentations in the office a few years ago. Now we obviously are in this world of virtual. Maybe one day we'll get back to being able to sort of meet in person like that again. Um, that's great, Joan. And, and you kind of sort of, um, sort of lent into the, the next question. So 
that's fabulous. I'll move over to Sabrina, and that's about you know how you're using the technology. And James has been sort of discussing that a little bit. How you know you've moved on. You know, we ha obviously had a discussion five or six years ago. You looked at it and you saw it in one way. So I'm, I'm intrigued now how you sort of moved on with that now, and where you're so, at. Today. Um I um, I tend to set uh, assignments to students. I mean, uh, John, your uh, idea of setting learning uh, reading assignments is a very good one. Uh, I don't do that, but I think I will consider it for the future. What I do, I set proper assignments like uh, the quizzes, yeah? And uh, uh, I set them before the lecture. Um, and I've done it for, for a long time. And I, uh, what I used to do, I set the, the quiz before the lecture, uh, and then again, the same quiz after the lecture. And the students initially were wondering why was I doing that? But then they understood that actually doing the quizzes before the lecture, they, uh, uh, it made them aware of what, uh, how little they knew. Right, and uh, they also um, the quizzes before the lecture they um, prepared them to the, the 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 kind of topic, yeah. So they were aware, they were becoming aware of uh, what was going to be taught. So, and I had interesting feedback from students that year when I uh, when I started doing that, saying uh, that actually initially they didn't understand why um, I was asking them to do all these quizzes, but then they understood that actually the first time they didn't have a clue and they realized actually it's important that I understand what this is about. Then they were going to lecture with an idea of the topic and then they were doing the assignments again and this time they were getting things right. So it was um, helping their growth, right? So once the student understand, understands this, it's a big uh, achievement because then they, they become owner of their own learning. Um, so, and, and now what I have uh, done, I introduced the quizzes before the lecture, but rather than setting them again, I leave them open for a longer period of time. So it's the same uh, assignments that the student uh, can choose to do uh, early or later. And um, obviously, uh, after submission, the student can still retake the same questions. Uh, but I prefer to give, um, um, you know, a, a defined time when they can do it uh, and submit because I want to really see that they engage in, in real time when the topic is being taught in class. Um, but I like this feature that also they can recharge the assessment so they can do it again in their own time. Mm -hmm. um, although then I, I will not know that they've done it, but um, I think it's a, it's, it's a big thing for them to be able to redo the same assignment um, uh, numerous times, especially for revision. Thank you, Subramina. Um, and uh, Marie, and the way that you've sort of adapted as you've gone along, have you, have you changed the way that you use the, 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 the courseware? Yeah. yeah, I suppose when we first implemented uh, McGraw-Hill Connect in 2019, it was very much kind of a, an extra resource tool to support the didactic uh, lecture. But really, when the pandemic hit in the academic 20, year 2020-21, it, it it really supported students in the learning mm. environment. It um, it allowed us to, to innovate with our teaching in, you know, that we could maybe not have a, a passive one hour face to face lecture, but uh, maybe we could replace that or in, in certain cases, I did replace that with a smart book reading like Joan had, had talked about a 15 minute tutorial on a certain topic, for example, maybe the, the hip joint. Um, and then a formative assessment like Sabrina uh, did in her module. So it allowed us to, to kind of think outside the box and how we were actually uh, teaching in the online environment is to move that kind of learning uh, for the students to direct themselves and then to come in uh, maybe to meet with us to have a much more collaborative active session uh, when we were together with our students. Um, so it definitely helped us, um, we used the smart book functionality was the, probably the biggest winner for us and that we could set 
smart book reading assignments based on core concepts every week. And we would release them the Friday before a week started. So students had that flexibility to engage early if they wanted to. Um, then it allowed us to back up each and every kind of didactic or uh, video recorded lesson with formative assessment from all of the resources that are located in McGraw-Hill Connect. There are so many different uh, types of uh, MCQs, drag and drop questions that we uh, implemented all of those into our modules. Um, so yeah, it, it really was a game changer for us in terms of being not with our students, but we could still track their engagement within McGraw-Hill Learning Connect uh, and ensure that they were they were still with us. Yeah, I, I, I've seen that quite a few times and, and the sort of first year when instructors are using our resources, we'll use one specific set of assignments or assessment that that does change. Um, and quite often that could be led by the students as well. And I've been involved in a couple of university sessions with, with near peer students where they've been looking at certain aspects. Dissection tool was one of them. And that may have been something that the instructors weren't looking at themselves, taken that feedback from the students and said, right, maybe we should start setting some, some assessment around that. Yeah. Thank you, Marie. Um, there's, there's one thing that quite often that, that we say as a publisher, and certainly from sales team point of view, when we first come to meet you, that we're going we're gonna to save you time um, and this is going to support you. Um, and it can save time in lots of ways, but you also then need to put a lot of time in. And again, for the people that I work with, I, I know how much time you've put into this. Um, I just want to kind of get an, an idea, you know, once you've made that decision and you think, yes, I'm going to go with this courseware and, and can you give and maybe we'll start with Joan jo and I and I've kind of observed conversations that you've had with our implementation team specifically with with, with Kevin O'Connor. Can you give an idea about the, the time that is needed? Um, yes, sure. Um, so firstly, thank you, David, and thank you, Kevin, uh, for being an excellent support team. Um, you have been excellent right through from student registrating um, onto Muggle Hill um, Smart Book um, and actually setting up resources for um, all the students as well, um, because I wasn't sure how to set up tutorial assignments from the beginning. Um, so we, we took kind of little steps and um, you also set up some um, meetings um, with actually other module leaders uh, in our university who also use McGaw Hill. And, and those are very useful as first steps uh, about what assignment can be set, what type of assignment, the use of question banks and test banks. So there's many resources there that have um, questions already, as Maria have said, MCQs, there's fill in the blanks, there's label, the structure. Um, there's also fantastic animation. That's really, really good. And the students just love, you know, video. <laughs> um, because they're very short, they keep under about five minutes, and then they have a few questions that's associated with those animations. So it's really, really good. Um, and just having a feel of what type of questions are there, um, that's really important as a starting point. And once you kind of have explored the system a little bit more, and you do need a bit of time to set it up, especially in that first year. Um, so my first year was really just to see what questions are there, how I can link those into tutorial assignments for each of the, the tutorials. And then for the second and third year was actually to explore not just the question banks that's associated with my textbook, but also other um, resources that's outside that, that McGill Hill platform also provides. So you basically modify and improve some of the questions that you choose. So the choosing and picking. And those questions are really good because they're auto-marked. Okay, that's really important, especially when you lead a very large module. Um, you can't in individually really mark all of the tutorial assignments. So having auto-mark question banks there, it's fantastic. And there's also some questions that require um, manual marking, which are kind of essay style, but those are set questions there for you to think about. Um, so this year, when uh, we've used the tutorial assignment, we've used a function called Worksheet. It's a customized um, assignment that you can set up yourself, um, which can then be auto-marked. Okay, now that's the important bit. It's customized, so that is not actually as a question that's in the question bank. So the students are not familiar with those 
those questions. They haven't come across those questions in other modules, but it's very specific to the topic that we want to introduce, for example, neuroscience. And we, we are doing a sheep dissection, brain dissection. So I did a customized worksheet. It's kind of fill in the blanks, making sure that students know how to spell those particular um, neuroanatomy words. But then, um, uh, I set it out the way I wanted it. So where I place the picture, what kind of questions I want to ask. But then that can be auto auto marked ultimately at the end. So um, I would say that it's definitely a process. The first year would be just exploring, um, contemplating on how to integrate those questions um, or assignments into your um, teaching um, curriculum. And then the second year is to improve, seeing what other resources are there. It's a, it's a, big, <laughs> a big field and you really do have to spend time to explore. But after that, it's just improving really mm -hmm. um, and now we're just spending a bit more time doing those customized worksheets uh, which I hope will work really well this year the student seems to um, really enjoy those additional questions um, and then um, once those are set you can reset them again for next year so I'm not anticipating on spending as much time as I did during the first year um, in the second third and then fourth and five years later on in the future thanks David that's fantastic. I, I'm going to just sort of move on because I see time sort of going past it fairly quickly now. Um, I'm just going to sort of move on to, I mean, that's great from, from the way that, you know, you're setting signs and I can see sort of the journey you've been on and, and how you're developing all the time. Um, now, over to the, from, to the student side, because um, they're and I, I, we're on many a call with people that are using our resources and you then obviously you've embedded it in your course show it to the students, you want to get the students registered um, and, and engaged. And it's not always quite as simple as that. <laughs> and, and we're often on calls where, you know, you're not getting 100% of the, of the students um, registering or engaging. So I'm just sort of interested, and if I start with you, Marie, about how you, you get your students kind of excited and, um, you know, engaged with, with the, the resources and the assessment that you're setting. Yeah, I, I suppose onboarding is important mm. um, we implemented the McGraw Hill learning technology for an entire first year of the program so the second module in semester two was pretty seamless um, they 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 got the hang of uh, things particularly quickly um, from semester one again there's good support from McGraw Hill and that Gary um, Sheehan came and delivered a talk on how uh, McGraw Hill on how to navigate the system so that was important and then for us then uh, I mean Sabrina will, will talk about the connect champions and and I I suppose did champion McGraw Hill connect within the modules so I would have tracked engagements of students so within the McGraw Hill uh, learning connect platform you can see how many students have registered based on the the students numbered uh, registered in your virtual learning environment so you know, I would have sent supportive emails or informative emails to my students telling them about, you know, how many students have engaged and, and this is really well, uh, really mm. good. And there's only 20 students that haven't fully registered and keep mm. up the good work. And that motivated them to kind of get on board with it. Um, and also when you you set the first smart book reading assignment, um, they, it really does speed up the registration process when mm. because we did have that as part of some of assessment. So there was a grade attached to it. So mm. it, 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 it helped the onboarding uh, as well. Uh, you can track student engagement by looking at the at risk category within McGraw Hill, which is a great tool. I mean, we had students in our modules, which were approximately 300. And by the end of uh, semester two module, four students had failed to complete uh, the smart book assignments, maybe uh, a couple of them. But when I actually went back in and looked at those students in more detail, those students had dropped off the program. So mm. McGraw-Hill uh, at risk category and tracking the engagement was really on point because we could, you could see how the students were engaging right across uh, the entire module. Um, and that was, imp again, important for us when we pivoted to straight to online uh, learning and we weren't there face to face with them. So it definitely helped us to, to track them. 
and there's your cat arriving in. That, yes, one cat arrived. Yeah, the, the other one will be joining later, probably. Um, and, and Sabrina. Yeah, I think um, I, I want to talk about this engagement uh, uh, tool that we have within Connect because uh, in the first um, cohort of students when I introduced Connect, um, I was a bit disappointed that some students were not doing their assignments. So what I did, I used the send email um, uh, mm -hmm. feature within Connect and um, uh, a lot of them replied. Um, with apologies, you know, so I think um, there are different ways you can interact with students, so you can talk to them at lecture, you can email them, but then if they get an email straight from the tool, I think it's like um, a wake up call, so I was pleased to see the reaction of the students. Um, this year, I have to say I'm particularly impressed because um, uh, on a cohort of 275 students, uh, last time I checked, we had 263 uh, registered with Connect, which in my opinion is really good. Um, and I, uh, uh, in order to indoctrinate the, the, the students on the use of Connect and things um, associated with it, uh, we set uh, tutorials uh, so they do the anatomy and physiology class, and then these are almost like lab practicals we, uh, or uh, team-based learning kind of activities. So we call them in groups and um, uh, they come with their laptop and they uh, do assignments in the class. But this is an excuse basically to um, check if there are any technical issues, any um, uh, problems with registrations and uh, we have done these tutorials now for years and we invite uh, staff from Macro Hill who are there to help so um, uh, we discovered that some students for instance couldn't access the APR and it was just a technical glitch because you had to click a button and then everything was fine. But you know, if you have all students in, uh, in a group, then you can solve, uh, you can troubleshoot there and then. And, um, and you can have a conversation with them that is more friendly than in a classical lecture. So we do uh, tutorials <clears throat> in the first term and also in the second term but, um, and these have the scope to uh, keep the students engaged. Uh, but in term one, uh, we have these introductory tutorials where we get the staff from McGraw Hill. Uh, I am there, the librarian is there, which is very important. We have this uh, fantastic um, collaboration with the library and uh, we work as a team, uh, basically. And, um, and so we, it's very informal, very friendly. We, we get the students to do some assignments and we ask for feedback uh, on the kind of assignments. We ask feedback about the use of Connect. Uh, some, and this is how we discovered that some students don't like the ebook because they prefer a, a printed copy of the book, not because they don't like the concept of the ebook, but they are used to, or some students prefer the animations uh, features, some students prefer other things. So it's an important checkpoint for us to see um, how the students receive this, uh, this, this kind of uh, approach. In term two, we have, uh, um, I mean, David, tell me if I'm talking too much, I'm <laughs> happy to stop, but <laughs> I wanted to say that we have tutorials in term two as well, but they are different. We get students from the third year to lead these um, um, uh, sessions. So, uh, and I think the students from the first year learn so much more from, from their peers. Uh, you know, from the senior peers. Uh, and um, we have done this kind of uh, uh, sessions for now, I think four years. And, um, and uh, uh, we get so good feedback from both cohorts of students, from the third year students and from the first year students. So they, uh, um, a lot of these third year students have been trained as PALS, so peer assessed uh, learning, assisted learning. 
and uh, they have uh, very different ways to present themselves as instructors, but they get the first year students to work in groups. So there are different tables and they work in, 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 in cooperation and uh, they, they give them tasks. Yeah, so we choose uh, a, a very challenging topic. So in my opinion, the endocrine system <laughs> is quite challenging. And also it offers a lot of different um, uh, um, uh, sub uh, section that the students can work on. And then uh, they ask the students to uh, choose a topic and um, then present a topic in the form of poster at the end of the two hours of tutorials. And, uh, uh, but in order to produce this poster, they have to use um, uh, all the resources that are offered into Connect. So you get them to do self-learning, you get them to look at the animation, you get them to look at the uh, cadaver dissecting tool, uh, uh, the histology. So it's basically full engagement, but it's given uh, so uh, uh, the students have the freedom to navigate uh, as they want in order to produce this poster. And uh, we are planning to do this again this, this year. Obviously, this is reliant on the contribution of uh, the third year students, but they are quite happy to do it. Um, and uh, it's a good experience for them as well. Thank you, Sabrina. And yes, you, you, you sort of led into the next question. So that's great. So that's kind of got that, that moving along as well, which was kind of very much about, as you said, student feedback. And, I, and I've seen that in the way that you, you, you poll within those sort of work groups as well, that, which is really good. So just sort of briefly, just going to, to Joan and, and Marie as well, just a little bit about student feedback um, and the importance of that. I know at, at um, Westminster, Joan, you have student ambassadors there as well. Um, yes, that's right. Um, so this year we have um, set up a group near peer scheme uh, uh, where last year students from last year who have taken the module have used McGaw Hill come back uh, this year to teach the first year student and that and those uh, near peers um, New peers are also part of the McGill Hill Student Ambassador Program. So during the summer, um, Paveen from Marketing's group have introduced a number of um, kind of sessions where our Student Ambassador slash New Peer. Um, um, supporters or instructors um, actually learn more about in depth about the smart book, um, how tutorial uh, assignment and set, about the learner's analytical dashboard, for example, what does the accuracy score mean, what does the completion score mean, and things like that. Um, also, they got information about um, how to write social blogs, how to write um, communication skills, marketing, and things like that, which are all very, very useful. Um, and then what happened is um, once they've got these training they come back at the start of semester one to actually um, share this knowledge with the first year. So we invite them for a lecture, online lecture, to talk about their experience. So what they like about McGaw Hill, why you need to register straight on, because obviously that links to assessment um, uh, and also um, how, what kind of difficulties they have, you know, first off with using the McGill Hill tool and how to overcome this obstacle. So it's really um, informative for the students and it's quite nice to hear from another person's point of view, not just your lecturers going on and on about having to register quick early um, and doing assignment, but actually from someone who's also a student who's been through the program and advising them that they should do this. And it really helps with their grade and with their learning. And that re is really useful. And then these near peers um, also um, contribute to, to tutorials. And during the tutorial in class face to face, they also help the student to register. So those ones who have difficulties, mm. um, they go through step by step on how to register. So there's really no excuse after those tutorials, uh, unless you don't come to tutorials uh, for not actually registering onto McGill Hill and um, using those reading assignments and, assign and uh, tutorial assignments for the assessment and also for their own learning. Thanks, Joan. Again, time-wise, I'm just gonna move on to our last question. Um, and you know, you've all got to a stage now where you've been using the, the the tools, the resources for a few years, and um, making that step originally, which you've kind of gone through, um, and and to use these and embed them, 
that you've you know in different ways you've had to find the funding for this as well and you know and that could be different obviously from the, the Irish model to different models in the UK which could be looking for funding from a department itself maybe going to the dean or the library I've just been intrigued to see how you've managed to do that because it also takes a bit of courage and determination to want to then go and ask somebody and turn around to to try and get that funding as well Marie I'm interested in in your in your story with that yeah I, I suppose the funding model in University College Dublin is whereby the students invest in the ebook and our ebook was Sealy's Anatomy and Physiology and with that then they got the McGraw Hill Connect uh, platform so it was the students that were making that initial investment because I think when students onboard onto anatomy and physiology modules they nearly feel secure by having a textbook um, they they probably they they need one for for support so initially the students were, were bearing that cost but this was before the pandemic and I think even more so now than ever that you know, academics have that necessary argument for the place of technology in their in their modules, and schools should be investing in technology to support uh, academics uh, to support their students in a virtual learning environment. We also uh, negotiated with Gary uh, to allow our students access to McGraw Hill uh, Connect technology for the four years, so the entire uh, program their entire program of study so uh, and we've seen the benefits of that because students have come back and said you know when they're on clinical placement and it could be a surgical placement for our nursing and midwifery students um, they have used the McGraw Hill uh, Connect technology to, to kind of revise core concepts in anatomy and physiology before they go on to clinical placement They've also used uh, McGraw-Hill Connect technology in terms of maybe doing a radiology uh, elective in further years. So, and, and students are coming back telling us, God, we're still using this uh, technology. Um, I find myself going into it all the time. So it's definitely uh, worth it for us. The initial investment, it's a lot of hard work in terms of embedding it into your module, as is any uh, technology, if you're going to use it effectively. But uh, the benefits to students are, are really great. And um, they definitely will benefit it from not only from anatomy and physiology, but from further uh, modules within, if they're in nursing and midwifery uh, degrees like our cohort were. Thank you. Um, I'd like to hear from Sabrina and Joan as well before we go to some questions. So yeah, Sabrina, you're... you're... Your experience of finding the funding? Uh, yes, <laughs> so we were quite lucky at Brunel because um, after we got uh, the, uh, to use Connect in a trial, you know, uh, halfway through the academic year, we decided that we liked it and the students liked it and uh, so uh, we were quite lucky because um, uh, Brunel uh, was um, um, announced a call for funding uh, was offering funding uh, to sponsor, um, um, you know, initiatives in uh, in education, and uh, uh, together with Joe, the librarian, we applied for for this funding um, with a project uh, based on the use of digital learning technologies um, uh, and in specific Connect. And David actually helped us to to write the proposal. Right, you remember. And so for this, we applied, uh, we asked for funding to um, pay for the licenses uh, for all of the students in the first year. And uh, we, we got the funding. So we could really carry out an experiment to, with a full cohort of students. And this helped us to get a lot of feedback from students. And uh, the year after we went to the Dean, no, the year after, Okay, the year after we didn't get the funding, we didn't ask for the funding, but we asked the students to uh, purchase their license. And um, uh, this means that not everybody uh, did that. So 60% um, of the students um, decided to pay for the license and the others just were relying on uh, books uh, borrowed from the library. 
So uh, I was not happy about that because then you give an advantage to the students who have the money to pay for the license and um, the other students are sort of left behind. So the year after we presented an argument to the Dean and uh, we uh, showed him the comparison between performance of students who were uh, given the tool, performance of students who didn't and uh, basically we convinced him. And um, uh, since then we got the funding to pay for the license for each student every year, but every year we need to present the proposal. So it's, uh, it's getting a little bit tiring because we don't have a guarantee. We, we asked for like a three year plan, but we can't because this has to uh, be approved by procurement and all this. So it's, um, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, I am committed, so I will keep doing it. And basically, I'm very grateful that um, the librarian is as committed as I am. So it's good to be doing this in company, not on my own. I think it's a good point you made actually about sort of a, a longer, um, you know, financial deal because especially as you're you're embedding it into your teaching, and now you've been using it for five or six years. And I think moving over to Westminster, and, I, and I've seen the sort of the progress over over the last few years of of funding there. Joan, do you want to quickly update on that? Yeah, I mean, three years ago, uh, we don't have a lot of modules that use McGill Hill tools. So it was just kind of our module function anatomy and also another module, so only two. So I do remember writing some business plans, um, sending it off to the library and then they forwarding to the head of school, for example, um, to get those fundings. But since, you know, three years ago, we have about nearly all our level four first year module use McCall Hill tools. So that's around four or five. And then also uh, at some second year uh, modules also uses McCall Hill as well. So we're looking at around, you know, five plus seven modules that use McCall Hill tool. And um, that funding have then moved to, I think the IT department. So it's kind of a funding paid off as a whole, isn't it, per year uh, on it. And that's made, everything much more easier and we don't have to individually um, send a proposal requesting for this funding. Um, everything is now just, you know, set up. We want to use McGill Hill in all these modules and we just basically give the expected numbers um, of students um, to David and they so he knows how many licenses um, to quote for and then the funding basically come from IT as a whole, isn't it? And then and that's about it. So worry free for us <laughs> and worry free for David. That that process is now so smooth. I mean, a few years ago, it was like a little bit of money from the library, a little bit of money from the department. And, you know, we didn't know we had the payment pretty much just before you started teaching. That whole process now is so smooth. And I think because it's, it's sort of mapped across your department with so many people use it, it's very much embedded. I think the university now understands that and, and have that all running very smoothly. So no, that's 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 fantastic. Um, come to the end of, of my questions. Thank you, everybody. Um, now I don't know whether you've got any questions in the QA, so I'll have a quick look there. Maybe Brian can help me because I've been concentrating on the on the panel here. Um, we have around 10 minutes left for any further questions. Um, Brian, were there any questions in the chat? Yeah, so we have one question from Ruth Oxley. Um, I don't this is a very specific question, so I don't know if you know the answer, but she's saying, how easy is this for students with dyslexia? So how does the platform help or adapt for students that might have additional needs? Um, Marie, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Um, I think there is, it does, it is accessible. Um, I think the one major thing about McGraw-Hill Connect is that it's, when I was designing my modules, it did fit nicely with the universal design for learning in that there are multiple means of, of engagement, multiple means of representation. So there, there are many varying different types of media. There is an accessibility functionality in it as well. Um, I think there is there a voice to, to speech? I think there is a capability for that. So it does hit the mark in, in terms of accessibility for dyslexic students. Um, even in the smart book function, there is a voice. So uh, the computer can read the, the, the smart book reading assignment. So it does check the boxes for accessibility. 
and in my book and, and from looking at it it does hit the book uh, hit hit the target for universal design for learning and building those kind of uh, uh, activities in in your mod module for student engagement so yeah it's a yes for me and I'll add to that. Um, so with um, setting up any of the assignment, reading assignment or tutorial assignments, we can also add extension for students who have learning disability, who have registered with our DLS um, uh, department. And so we set them additional time um, uh, also date actually the due date is actually moved back about five five working days so they have additional time to spend on doing those tutorials and reading assignment um, and also the mode of assessment um, that you choose in your tutorial assignment so that's why I mentioned the question bank because it's not just MCQ questions not just fill in the blanks but there's also um, images that you can drag um, platform to um, to highlight each of the structures that you want. So it's interactive. There's also videos as well. Um, and actually the APR itself, the Anatomy and Physiology Review have quizzes. Um, and those quizzes um, allow the students to actually click on each of the structures that have that the names come up for. So not a lot of things that's in the assessment or in the um, assignment are actually written work or they have to read a huge paragraph and um, and regurgitate that paragraph. There's other modes of assessment within McGill Hill tools that you can choose um, to put in your assignment that could be um, good um, and flexible for lots of other students with different learning abilities. Thanks. Be helpful feedback, thank you. Um, I have a question from, um, forgive my pronunciation, Ama, I think it is, um, which is from your experiences, what are your best strategies to increase student engagement? So Sabrina, I don't know if you wanted to take that one. Well, I think I, um, I sort of touched on that. Um, I think the best uh, way to um, uh, involve students and to attain a uh, certain student engagement is to um, communicate with them, yeah. And uh, um, uh, for instance, this year I am Connect Champion for for the uh, department, and uh, um, you know I feel obliged to respond to each email that the students send. Uh, you know, and they're not really many, but uh, you know uh, the, the way we, for instance, the way we uh, set the assignments, they are not for summative uh, purposes. It's uh, entirely for formative um, assessment. But um, uh, these are first year students. They are still used to the, you know, um, college uh, kind of style of uh, learning. And they uh, email me saying, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't do the assignment on time. You know, and uh, in, deep inside, I think, okay, that I don't care <laughs> really, it's your problem. But I, 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 I um, respond to them and say, well, thank you for letting me know. Um, don't worry, you can still do the assignment even if you don't submit it, but it's good for your learning. So I, I show that I care. And I think this is more valuable than any, you know, uh, technical reminder or whatever, because they feel uh, at the end of the day, especially in the uh, with the pandemics and with the fact that we are doing everything remotely, just a, a, a kind human word, you know, can encourage a student to, to do that. So this is the the, the main, uh, the, the most uh, effective way, I think, to show that you care and they mm -hmm. will respond. But also, again, uh, the, the tutorials, and uh, setting the assignments right. So um, if you set the assignment that are not longer than 30 minutes, uh, this is the, just the right, um, the right time for students to say, okay, yes, I'll do it. If you set assignments that are an hour, the student will procrastinate and then in the end will not do it. So mm -hmm. I learned that uh, I will set more assignments, but smaller, if mm -hmm. I want them to engage. Um, so there are, I think people then will work out them by themselves what works best uh, for their cohort of students, but there are little tricks. And mainly I think um, uh, if you decide to, you, to use Connect, but 
any uh, digital learning tool, you, you as an academic need to be engaged with it. Um, because it's not something that you can say, okay, the university pays for me, I'll give it to students, they do what they want. No, they still need a human being behind the tool. And um, I, I can see uh, that um, also for our colleagues, academics is, academics is important to have a figure to refer to. So, and I ha I'm happy to liaise with my colleagues who are also using Connect for other disciplines, because I think it's almost like a comfort to have somebody who can help them and uh, make them independent and reassure them. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm thinking more, I'm thinking about the students, but I'm also thinking about my colleagues and, uh, you know, uh, the academics need to, to be engaged uh, with what they are using. I think that's a really important point. Thank you. Um, Jane or Marie, did you have anything you wanted to add just on the theme of student engagement? No, I think Sabrina uh, responded eloquently. I agree with Wonderful. Um, I have a question from Geraldine, which is from Marie. Um, she says, have you used um, a Connect, I believe she's referring to, and other modules other than AMP um, with um, nursing students? Uh, um, I suppose, in my previous job, I was an academic lead for anatomy and physiology. And now in my new current role, I'm senior instructional designer for the CUA Alliance. So, I mean, moving forward, I, I, I believe in McGraw-Hill Connect technolo technology and how good it is for students. I do I have been looking in terms of other subjects like accounting, uh, like the business and even engineering. And there is a uh, really good scope on how you can adapt McGraw-Hill Connect technology maybe into the first one or two years of, of an engineering program, for example. So, um, you know, the how it's set up in terms of smart book assignments, the formative assessment, none of that will differ, that the subject matter will differ, um, but uh, the actual building and the structure of McGraw-Hill Connect um, is definitely one that I think works within other uh, subjects outside of anatomy and physiology. So um, yeah, I'll be exploring that further. And just to add to that, sorry, um, Bryony. Um, yes. So we teach students who is biomedical uh, and biomedical science, so they will become biomedical scientists. Well, a lot of them will strive to become a biomedical scientist. So actually practical lab is a very important element of our course. Um, so the, um, the lab smart, which is also part of the McGill Hill tool, are very useful for that. So how to use the prepared um, and doing some calculations and things like that have been very helpful, especially during the um, COVID pandemic, when students can't actually go in and do those practicals. Thanks. That's wonderful. Thank you all. Um, I'm aware we're now at time. Uh, David, are you happy for me to draw things to a close? Thanks. Yes, absolutely. Just say thank you to everybody. And I think if, if, we, if there are any more questions, um, other people on the call could maybe reach out to their own uh, local and um, consultants to talk and and, and maybe um, have the opportunity to talk to, to one of the panelists if, if necessary, if they wanted to ask more questions. Sure. Wonderful, thank you. Yes, thank you so much to Marie, Joan and Sabrina for sparing your time and sharing your expertise today. And thank you to David for acting. Thank you to Sam for keeping an eye on the chat box. And thank you to all of you for attending. I do hope you found it useful. So I will be sharing with you in the next couple of days uh, the video recording of the session. Um, and do get in touch if you would like any more information. And uh, obviously feel free to share that with any of your colleagues who are not able to attend today. Thank you once again. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.